Let's build out this mid-journey UI design in HTML with Figma and Dora. So right off the bat, I got these four designs, which all look great. They also added this vary button, which allows you to create similar variations. So I use those as well. So let's just put these in Figma and go ahead and create a desktop layout. I'll use the MacBook Pro 16 inch. Then we'll just bring in one of the designs to start tracing all the UI layout. We'll check clip content so we can see all the content below the fold, and then we'll resize our section to fill the content. For each layout container in the page, we're gonna create a frame shortcut F. So we're just gonna draw those out, and then we're going to use auto layout to specify the direction that the content will lay out. So the, this is going to contain nested frames using auto layout in various directions. Then I'm just gonna type in the navigation items at the top here. Then I just adjust the padding and the layout so that it's centered within this section. And we adjust the margin between the items as well to match. Then we just play around with the font size so that everything looks right. Then we just repeat this process for the other text section in the header, only going vertically and making sure that all the padding and font sizes match. The second section is a bit more complicated, but we basically do the same thing. So it's going to be a large vertical layout with a bunch of horizontal layouts inside of it. The middle section here is really just a big horizontal layout with the image, vertical layout items, and the vertical line divider as well. Then we just proceed to populate all these sections with text and match the font size and weights. Then we just continue to adjust the sizing and padding to make sure everything lines up right. So we're just gonna take a couple of these other sections and trace those in the same way. Now that the layout's done, we're ready to bring it into Dora. So you can actually just go into your plugins panel and search for Figma to Dora and make sure that your root frame is selected because we wanna get all of our contents to copy it in. And with the plugin opened, you just click copy to clipboard. And then we can hop on over to Dora and simply command V paste our content in. You may need to make a few adjustments here. Like I had to go through and set these sections to fill space um, because Figma does not support that attribute. So I also went through and removed the background color on my main frame and then resized the page to match the dimensions that I used in Figma then you can just click this play button to preview. So Dora is really cool because it allows you to do really complex animation and 3D. So let's hop over to Blender and create some 3D assets we can use. First, select the cube and hit X to delete. Then hit Shift A to add and we're gonna choose Mesh and Icosphere. You can scale it up by hitting S and dragging the mouse. Then I'm gonna select the light and reposition it and turn it into a sunlight. And then I'm just gonna rotate the direction and adjust the intensity. Next, I'm gonna hop into Photoshop so that we can create a texture out of this image of a planet here. So I'm just gonna select the image and copy it to a new document. Then using the ellipse selection tool, I'm just going to select the planet and with command shift I, I'm going to invert the selection and hit delete. Then we can just use the lasso selection tool to trace out and delete all these little planets and other elements that we don't want. Then we just select all the negative space, go up to select, modify, expand in five pixels. OK, and then generative fill. 
It's okay that it has this outer purple area because what we're gonna do next is just enlarge this to fill the square. Then you can go up to view and select pattern preview. This allows us to see how our image is going to tile. Then choose filter, other, offset. We're gonna adjust it both horizontally and vertically. This will make it easier for us to fix the seams of our image. Then what we wanna do is choose the patch tool and just grab these seams and drag them around. It may look splotchy at first, but if we continue to clean these up, they'll seamlessly fade into each other. Then we just do the offset filter again to get everything centered the way it was originally. We can continue to use the patch tool to heal up any other areas that might be remaining to be fixed, and then go ahead and save it out as a JPEG. So back in Blender, we wanna click on this shading tab at the top, and this will bring us into our shader node graph editor. Then over on the right, click this material properties button, which looks like a sphere, and then press new to add a new texture. Hit shift A to add a node, and then in the search input, type image texture, so we can add an image texture node. Then just click open and navigate to the texture we created. Then connect the color output on our image texture to the base color. Now we're gonna add a couple other nodes to position it correctly, so hit shift A again, type mapping, to add a mapping node. Then shift A again and type texture coordinate to add a texture coordinate node. We're gonna map the UV on our texture coordinate node to the vector in our mapping node. And then the vector output to the vector input in our texture node. This allows us to have better control over how our texture maps to the UVs of our surface. Then we wanna go up and click the UV editing tab at the top. So in the editing mode, we press A to select all, then U to unwrap and click sphere projection. This will give us the best results of wrapping our texture around this shape. Then we can just hit the layout tab and duplicate our sphere and create multiple variations of this, scale them down and add new textures to create all the other planets. Now we're ready to export our scene. So we can go to file, export and choose GLTF 2.0. Then we can just name our file and click export. Next, I wanna create a nice background image for the header area. So I'm gonna make a selection with the marquee tool, copy it and create a new document to paste it into. And then we're gonna use the lasso selection tool to just select some of these outer lying text elements that we don't want in there. And we can select them and then right click and choose content aware fill. This works a little quicker than generative fill for this easy to replace content. So we just do that for all these easy to replace sections. Then for the main section, we make a big selection and here we're gonna use generative fill. And so this gives us a few options to choose from and we just pick the best one that matches the kind of background that we're looking for. So now let's hop back into Dora. We're going to place in our background image with this image placement tool. Just drag it across the viewport and then choose select source and we'll load in our background image. Let's move it behind the rest of our content and then set the width to fill space and the height to 100 viewport units. Then we're gonna click this timeline button up top, which exposes our animation timeline. And we're gonna click this pin for our image. And this is gonna make sure that it's fixed as we scroll down the page. So you can see our viewport scrolling down here. Next, we're gonna click this cube icon up top, which allows us to place our 3D component. You can just drag that across and click import 3D model and choose the GLB that we exported from Blender. Then you can see we have this rotation tool. We can move the camera around and zoom in to get things aligned exactly how we want. Once we click done and select our 3D widget in our layers, we can set its width to fill space and the height to 100 VH. Then we're gonna pin this in our timeline as well so it's fixed with the viewport as we scroll. 
Next, I'm just gonna add another image graphic for the background that I pulled from the Mid Journey design. Now we're gonna animate the 3D model on scroll. So we can actually unfold this and select Planets GLB and click this Add Keyframe button in the timeline. Now, as we scroll, we can go down, scrub down to the next section. And when we get to a position where we want it to be different, we can actually go in and rotate this object, creating a new keyframe. Then we can hit this play button in the upper right to preview the website and see how it animates as we scroll down the page. Next, I just go in and change the order of some of the layers so that it sits behind the content instead of on top of it. Then I just kind of play around a bit, adding more keyframes and a few more assets to the background sections. If your GLB has animations, just select it in the layers panel and then click these toggles to enable them. Dora also has support for post-processing effects. So if you select your 3D widget, you can just toggle post-processing and then play around with these values. So you can actually publish your website from Dora with this publish button in the upper right. Just click on and it'll create a link for you that you can go ahead and open up. And here's our finished animated website.